We're ready now for our second match. Lefty Ricky Ward taking on our number three seed qualifier, Steve Jarris. Okay, okay. And, uh, here we are with Ricky Ward. <laughs> First up on lane 29, match number two. And a great break. Ball coming in very, very high. Fortunate, he knows it, got away with one. So Ricky Ward... So this ball is always just high off his hand, but there goes the next pin, there goes the 10 pin, and, the, and there goes happiness. Look at Steve Jarris, first shot, second match. A bowler that looked very, very good in practice, and, and someone who's really been very consistent over the last few years, makes a lot of telecasts, makes a lot of top 24s, but has not won as often as I think his talent would, uh, would dictate. Just two, just two titles. 16 years on tour. Average 239 on this television pair with a high game of 279 this week. Hurry back. That's the hit that'll win you a lot of tournaments as June, his lovely wife, who is uh, pregnant with twins. <laughs> Watch the six pin as it just taps out the 10. It's that kind of hit right there. Going to win you lots of tournaments. And uh, right now for Ricky Ward, down by 10 pins. Early pressure. And all sorts of problems with lane 30. Boy, he came in light a few times on the last game on lane 30. Came in high once on lane 30. It's Steve Jarris and three left-handed bowlers right now. So if, uh, if there's a problem on the left-hand side, it could bode well for Jarris. Oh, great cover as he makes the run, the three, the six, and the seven. Keeps himself only ten pins down. Picks up another ball. As you take a look, the ball is just a little bit to the to the right of the head pin. Sends it over into the, into the seven. Great cover, and with a brand new ball, a switch of equipment, a tap out of the seven pin. So Ricky Ward picks up the split, comes back with a strike here in the third frame, and Steve Jarris once again, uh, his wife June pregnant with twins, so he needs to win badly. You know, formula and diapers, all that stuff. You gotta win. <laughs> He's trying, I'm here to you right now. Two at one time. Oh my. Brings it back. Oh, is that pretty? June appreciates that. And Jarris really has done the bulk of his quality bowling. You alluded to earlier, he's a 16-year pro. He's done his best bowling in the last five to seven years. Made nearly 80,000 last year on tour. This year, he's bowled 120 games. Averaged uh, about 218. Very consistent player. Again, Marsha, you talked about uh, Steve making a lot of top 24s, uh, cashing week in and week out. It's making the top five and then winning the title. That could be a problem for Steve. Times in this old ball. I saw that eight pin standing. Well, he's not having any problems right now. For Steve Jarris, Steve is certainly in command of this pair. Ricky Ward is going to have to make a good adjustment on the right hand lane if he expects to contend. We'll come back for the rest of this. Yeah, got a bowling on ESPN. The PBA Tour has established a bowling instructional and educational program called PBA Tour University. World-class bowling instructor Freddie Borden joins PBA members and other top coaches utilizing classroom learning, video analysis, online instruction, and personalized equipment consultation. For more information, contact the PBA at 330-836-5568. And we're talking about Freddie Borden. He's quite a teacher. He certainly is. A great motivator. And as far as... Equipment is concerned. I said that Ricky changed balls. He's actually using a very similar ball, just a fresher surface. Not helping him on lane 30, unfortunately, for Ricky. When you're talking about a fresher surface, what does that do exactly when the ball hits the lane? It just it, it enables the ball to go longer through the through the front end of the lane before it starts making the hook back toward the pocket. Important to pick up the spare. Still not out of this game, although. Steve Jarris showing absolutely nothing but perfection as he has four strikes in a row through four frames. Ward won the opening match over Lionel Walachek, 202 to 170, and Ricky Ward now down by 30, but he weathered the storm in, in the first match, picking up a lot of spares here in the second match. He's picked up a split and other spares, so he wants to get it going here. The difference is Walachek wasn't throwing lots of strikes. And again, 
the ball comes up light, punches the hole. There's the one and the three, the four, the six, and the seven. Two ways to make this bear fill. You can either go to the right-hand side of the head pin and drive the head pin in the four and seven, or you can actually throw the ball hard and straight, fit the ball between the, the one and the four, and make it that way. So uh, we'll see what his choice is. He's going to the right side of it, and he makes it. What a great spare. Oh. It's a spare clinic from Ricky Ward. Doesn't he look nervous? <laughs> Beautiful shot. Well, we'll see it again. He goes to the right-hand side of the head pin, throws it into the four and the seven, and uh, I'm telling you, this is, this is fun to watch. Very, very cool and nonchalant about it. Jarrett's with the first four. Will it be five? Well, he lofted it out of the lane a little bit, maybe to delay the hook and really snap back, and he has thrown five picture-perfect strikes here in match two. Ricky Ward talking with his ball rep right now, trying to figure out something to try and put up a little offense against Jarris. Uh, right now, he's making lots of lots of spares, lots of tough ones, but and Ward's got 75 of the fourth. Jarris, he's perfect right now, and he has a 45-pin lead after five frames. Will it be 55? We shall see. Oh, and an extra $10,000. Should a player throw a 300 game, $25,000 in the title match. So stick around for that for the first six for Steve Jarrett. Let me ask you with Ricky Warren, Marshall, the, a couple of lefties still to go, Jason Couch, Parker Bone. Are they worried at all looking at uh, the problems maybe that, that Ricky's having? I know everybody throws the ball differently. Well, I would think they would be. Well, there's a three and the six coming in a little light once again on lane 30. Just really having problems. He's changed balls. He's changed his line of the lane a little bit uh, for uh, for Jason Couch and, and Parker Bone. If I was them, I'd be concerned right now, especially not maybe not so much with the struggling of uh, Ricky Ward, but with the command of Jarris right now with six strikes in a row. Uh, and not not just striking, but doing it convincingly with with uh, you know flush flush hits, very good shots. Seven frame for Ricky Ward. And the rears by 47. 233, the best Ricky Ward can do. Will it fall? Make it 222, the best Ricky Ward can do. Well, gets the the messenger or the bird dog. Coming back toward that seven pin. Not going to happen. He makes the spare. But, uh, you know, Ricky Ward, he's got two strikes and five spares and, and a big, big deficit to Steve Jarrett. We're going to stay with you. We're not going to take a commercial break because Jarrett has the first six in a row. That's got a hold. Oh, my God, he's got room. Epo with a good three boards left off his hand, Phil, and it did hold the pocket. And you see him smiling? He's going, yeah, wow, that's right. I'd say wow right now, too. He just he's got no chance. I mean, uh, Jarris not only making good shots and striking, but also has the reaction to be able to miss a little bit, especially left. Yeah, three boards. That's how many he's got easily. Jim Jarris looks on. Hurry back. That's eight in a row for Steve Jarris. He is cooking here in Chattanooga. And the, the pros would stay, as we say for Steve right now, you got the whole lane. June's pleased with that eighth one. <laughs> you bet $10,000. That'd go a long way to helping out the twins. What about Chattanooga Choo Choo? I tell you what, ride the train. It's Steve Jarris right now. It's Ricky Ward. Well, he made a great shot. He leaves a seven pin. And uh, Ricky knows he's nothing but a supporting member of the cast right now. It's, it's Jarris' show. And what a comfortable position to be uh, sitting there with the front eight strikes while uh, knowing that you've got room on the lanes. Finally, it makes the makes what looks like the perfect shot. The ball drives past the eight pin. It's a solid eight. The ball just goes right past the eight pin. Nothing goes over and interferes or touches it. Easy spare. Yep. He loves to uh, fish, does Ricky Ward. But right now, Steve Jarrett's just railing him in. Ninth frame for Jarrett. If you just joined us. 
Nice to have you by, Phil Ferguson, along with my partner, Marshall Holman, but Jarris now the first hand. And we'll just watch and enjoy as we see him go for the ninth one. He didn't, he wasn't sure of that shot until they all fell over, Phil. That ball was hanging and hanging and hanging and just barely getting back up in the pocket. Watch, he's, right now he's got to be saying, please hook a little bit. Tickles him over, nine in a row, three more for $10,000. Really have one 300 game all the way. Roger Falcon made a telecast a couple of weeks ago. The first nine, Jarrus up in the 10th. Is good lane too. On lane 30, a couple shots, a little bit high, a couple shots, so maybe just one shot, a little light. On 29, he's looked very, very solid. Could it be a 300 on our telecast today? Last time, I believe Parker Bone, uh, Jarris with that checkered flag, racing home here. It was Parker in Reno last year. Ten in a row. And June, June's going wild. That's right. One more, Steve. Come on, you can do it. Folks, you don't have the twins here. All right. One more strike for what I would believe would be the 13th 300 game on national television. Interesting, too, because fans in the past would be dead quiet right now. But they are hooting and hollering for Jarris, who needs this one for a 300. Takes a deep breath, and let's just watch. for Steve Jarris, 13300 on the telecast. And everybody's on their feet right now, including Phil and myself. A hug from wife June. Extra $10,000 courtesy of the PBA, but Steve still has another match or two to go. But again, hugs from Parker Bowen, our tournament leader. Here's the last shot he threw. It's coming in a little light. The power knocks him down the five, into the seven. Oh, it's... And a great reaction. From it's, not a, it's not a choo-choo train, it's a freight train. Well, we've got everybody excited. Jason Couch comes out and congratulates Steve Jarris. He'll be bowling him coming up next. And, uh, of course, Parker Bone, was he came here. And we are going to come back in just a minute with that uh, check presentation of $10,000. Stay with us, Steve Jarris. A 300.